Luke chapter 1, verses 5 to 25. In the days of King Herod of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah who belonged to the priestly order of Abijah. His wife was a descendant of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. Both of them were righteous before God, living blamelessly according to all the commandments and regulations of the Lord. But they had no children because Elizabeth was barren, and both were getting on in years. Once, when he was serving as priest before God and his section was on duty, he was chosen by lot, according to the custom of the priesthood, to enter the sanctuary of the Lord and offer incense. Now at the time of the incense offering, the whole assembly of the people was praying outside. Then there appeared to him an angel of the Lord, standing at the right side of the altar of incense. When Zechariah saw him, he was terrified, and fear overwhelmed him. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah, for your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you will name him John. You will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He must never drink wine or strong drink. Even before his birth, he will be filled with the Holy Spirit. He will turn many of the people of Israel to the Lord their God. With the spirit and power of Elijah, he will go before him to turn the hearts of parents to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Zechariah said to the angel, How will I know that this is so? For I am an old man and my wife is getting on in years. The angel replied, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God, and I have been sent to speak to you and to bring you this good news. But now, because you did not believe my words, which will be fulfilled in their time, you will become mute, unable to speak until the day these things occur. Meanwhile, the people were waiting for Zechariah and wondered at his delay in the sanctuary. When he did come out, he could not speak to them, and they realized that he had seen a vision in the sanctuary. He kept motioning to them and remained unable to speak. When his time of service was ended, he went to his home. After those days, his wife Elizabeth conceived, and for five months she remained in seclusion. She said, This is what the Lord has done for me when he looked favorably on me and took away the disgrace I have endured among my people. What an answer to prayer it was for Zechariah and Elizabeth. Childlessness was regarded as a disgrace in the Jewish culture at that time. So their fruitfulness, how they offered themselves, was focused on their spiritual lives by praying for and serving others with love. Zechariah and Elizabeth waited, and they waited. The waiting room is the place where time stands still. In the doctor's waiting room, the dentist the hospital. It all seems as though the hours have passed, then we view the clock and it's only ten minutes. When we are in a waiting room, the world just seems to halt. Time slows almost to a standstill. So when the Bible extols us to wait upon the Lord, we find it painfully difficult. We live in a world where waiting is a rare phenomenon, although the British are pretty good at it. Waiting in line, people cut in, waiting on the phone with the same tedious tune playing causes our blood pressure to rise as well as our phone bills. Why wait when we can have it now? Credit, fast food, we want it now. But sometimes we just can't have it right now. Waiting is hard. The news for a test result, for health to improve, waiting for the other person, the wait to drop off or to go up. We have seen others impatient in waiting. When the printer fails to print and the internet page to upload, the quicker things happen, the more impatient we get. 
I wonder if we have learned to be more patient this year, as so many things have taken out of our control. When struggling with waiting, can I please encourage you to look at the life of Zechariah and Elizabeth, who encourage us to look to God and to remember that those who wait will mount up with wings like eagles. Dear friend, in your waiting, may you know the love of God, the God of hope.
Let us pray. Gracious God, I will wait and look for you in my life. I wait longing for the news I desperately want to hear. I wait in desperation. Help me to remember that your grace is sufficient for me, that all I cling to I can lay at your feet. So I lay it down, my tears, my fears, my waiting, my all. And I wait on you. Amen.